So guys, welcome. Welcome Nicholas uh, and David. Good to his mother. Espinosa. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. A little bit tired, but I got my coffee, so. <laughs> rough days? Okay. Oh, yeah, rough days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to remind you. <laughs> well, I had a really good day, to be honest. I was just, <laughs> Not to brag. I was just, you know, feasting. I was just living like a pig today. A little piglet. <laughs> <laughs> That's one big old piglet. I know. <laughs> Anyways, so today is the third episode of the series. Uh, no, sorry, fourth episode of the series of the romantic movie, whatever. Uh, it's going to be on Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Play the romantic music. First off, I just want to get my first thoughts. Honestly, this movie is like the example of what every man should be. <laughs> At least Hollywood standards. Yeah. <laughs> it's better for Hollywood standards, you know? Kidnapping is fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so I guess we should summarize the movie. Um, I guess it starts off with this guy. His name's Adam. He's like a woodsman, backwoodsman. And he lives far from the town in the country. And so, the story takes place in like in the 1850s. Yeah, like the 1800s, mm -hmm. mid 1800s. Oh. Okay. And so, well, that's the same thing. You said. <laughs> Anyways, so then he is going into town, and he, um, you know, he's buying whatever he needs to buy, and then he he promised himself that he would come back with a wife. But the thing is that because he wants to get a wife right now, because if he waits a little longer, he's gonna be snowed in. And he's not going to be able to see her. So then, he's just going for anyone that could cook, clean, and... What was the other thing? Oh, and that's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Most important part. Yeah. <laughs> well... Well, he also wanted a strong woman. Yeah. Strong. He wanted a lot of uh, qualities, but... So, he, basically what he said is, I'm not going to choose one woman until I've seen them all. So he goes all over town. And he starts singing. Nice. Oh, this one's slim, or something. <laughs> or what do you say? Or should we put out the lyrics? Yeah, yeah. Okay, women, if you want to know the male mind when he's picking a wife, this is it. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I mean, <laughs> at least for when, when the guy. What is, is it called? <laughs> looking uh, at. Bless your beautiful hide. But we gotta sing this. Oh, we're gonna sing. Wait, what is it called? The song? Uh, bless your like U O R E. Beautiful hide. That's just guys. I'm sorry, girls. You will never. Am no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, <laughs> he's just like Pretty basing it on looks and um, if she could cook and clean. Pretty and trim, but not too slim. Heavenly eyes and just the right size. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so he's going through town trying to choose his mate. And he finally finds her, but he wants to get married that day that he meets her. And um, basically, she bases it on feelings, where she's like, every time someone asks me out, I mean, uh, uh, what's it called, proposes to me, I always get this weird gut, you know, gut feeling. No, no, she always says yes. Oh, well, she says yes, yeah. and then she gets this weird gut feeling right before the marriage, and she just ditches him. She gets cold feet. But... This time, that didn't happen, so that means she has to get married. <laughs> so she goes back, and, um, and well, she, she thinks that it's just going to be him, mm -hmm. him and her, uh, just living the married life, but it turns out he has six other brothers, and they're like wild, you know, wild children. <laughs> Anyways, they're really wild, but they're all grown up already, and basically the husband wants her to, like, basically be the mom of all all his brothers and so he wants a, a woman to be in the house to cook and clean for everyone and she's it wasn't what she thought it was going to be she thought it was just going to be you know her dream home you know her dream life mm -hmm. with just her husband just her and him but <laughs> all the brothers are all like you know hillbillies and like don't yeah, they, they lack manners and they're just you know they're just like me <laughs> yeah. but with red hair and you know they 
Pants. Five inches taller. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so the whole movie is about her, you know, trying to get the uh, the brothers to, you know, be well mannered and to, you know, just be better people so that they they can attract another girl. <laughs> you want to continue because I I'm like really like rusty on the details. Um, let's see, I haven't seen the movie in a week, but. Uh... When she gets, she, so she starts trying to train the boys about manners and all like that. And she starts teaching them how like socialize with other people, and then you find she finally takes them. They have like a big kind of like a what was it? It's like a barn raising. Barn raising. So she's like, all right, here's our time to test the kind of like the skills we've been <laughs> learning. So they all, all the boys dress up. They all get you know pimp out. You know, <laughs> they get pretty good. And they go and then they you know pedazzle everyone and all the ladies. You know. But she also warns about the towns, other townsmen that mm. there's other competition, and the boys are known for getting into, like big fights with men. So she tells the boys not to get into any fights with anybody. So when the boys start, you know, falling in love with those girls, and the other boys of the town men start noticing, they start like you know getting into, like kind of like more of aggressive, like they're fighting. But the brothers, they wouldn't put up any fight. They you know they'll just you know smile or take the hit. You know they'll keep going. Um, eventually, they, uh, they, they ruin the whole thing, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> um, they end up leaving town, but, you know, the boys had a great time. They all woo their own little girl here and there. <laughs> and they all fall in love, and they all come back to their house, and they all get lovesick. Man. They were all, you know, dreaming. <laughs> At one point, Adam has a bright idea. He's like, you know what? Let's kidnap them. I can't remember why. I think he was, like, talking about, like, um... I think it's because one of them wanted to leave the barn. Oh, yeah. To, like... <clears throat> so, because or else they would be trapped in the snow and they wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to see them again. The girls. And so, one of them was, like, I, can, I guess I'll just leave here and go to town mm -hmm. for the winter. And then Adam goes and tries to, uh, to, you know, convince him otherwise. But instead, he has an idea that maybe he could just kidnap... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kidnap the girls. He, well, I, what from what I remember, he like goes into the barn because all of them are all sad and they're all <laughs> yeah, they're all just in the barn. They're all lovesick. <laughs> he's like, oh, you guys, you guys look pathetic. They're down bad. He's like, <laughs> they're down you know bad. what? I'll I'll tell you what you can do, and he tells a story about Romans. Yeah, that, that's what it was. Yeah, about the the ro, ro, you know ancient Romans. How I don't know some story of them kidnapping women. Mm -hmm. Um. And so he's like, that's what you guys have to do. <laughs> so they literally go and get a, get their horses, get their carriage, and, and they set off to go kidnap these women. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Um, they were successful, eh? <laughs> yeah, they brought them good. back. <laughs> so basically, um, Adam's wife was devastated, and she scolded the, the, you know, the the brothers so. Badly. So badly. Um, she she didn't let them come in contact with each other for that whole time. Well, come in contact with the girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so essentially, what when when the brothers went to kidnap the girls, their fathers and everything got their guns and their horses, and they were about to go kill them. But um, they, they caused while they were running, they caused an an avalanche, which closed the pass and the, basically, yeah, all the men had to wait until a after winter. winter, so they can go get the women. And, um, so, yeah, so, Adam's wife gets really mad, and for all that time during winter, keeps them apart, but, you know, they look at each other from far away, and, you know, little by little, the girls, you know, even though they're scared and they're devastated, they start falling in love or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of the movie, um, after, after winter is done and the pass is open, the men come with their guns to kill, uh, to kill their brothers, and um, it was then that Adam, uh, well, a Adam had been living by himself in the cabin because his wife got mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and he realized that if it was his daughter that was kidnapped, then he would you know, hang them up and do all you know all sorts of things to them. So so he was so he went back and he was like, you know what, we have to return the the women. <laughs> and so. Like basically, they go the the women don't want to leave. They're like, no, you can't take me. 
and they're like, no, we have to go. And the, each of the seven brothers get each of the seven girls or whatever. And it looks like, you know, like they're mistreating them in reality. They're trying to bring them back okay. home with their fathers. And then uh, it's, it's in, the, in the middle of doing that, the, the fathers uh, show up. And with their guns and everything, and they they beat up the brothers, and they and they they gather all the all the women into like the barn or in a room, something like that. And then uh, their the past their pastor had come along with them. He was like, "Look, girls, just tell me the truth. I heard a baby crying back there. Just don't worry. We're all your fathers here. We only care for you. We want the best. What's best for you? Just tell me whose baby was it?" And it was then and. It, it was none of theirs. It was actually Adam, Adam's wife's baby. What, what's her name? Adam's baby. <laughs> well, yeah, Adam's, Adam. Adam's baby. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I think yeah. her name was Millie or something? Millie, yeah. Um, anyways, and they get this light bulb. <laughs> and they're like, wait a minute. And they're all, like, all seven of them re- reply, it's mine. <laughs> so, basically, the movie ends with the dads. Basically, at gunpoint, <laughs> standing behind, uh, uh, you know, um, all the seven brothers and all the seven uh, brides to be, uh, and uh, the pastor that's already there, he's like, okay, and he names all seven of the brides. Do you take take, you know, uh, whatever? He names all the seven brothers in ma- in marriage and solid matrimony. I do, and then it comes, to, and he's like. Okay, okay, men, and then he names all the brothers. Do you take these women, or whatever? And then they look back, and the, the the fathers like have their guns, and they're like, they're like, I do, <laughs> and so that's that's the happy ending, I guess. <laughs> and that's the whole story. Well, who knew? Hollywood. Seven brothers for seven <laughs> brothers. <laughs> <clears throat> so what's the takeaway? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's a good question. Self-explanatory. Like, yeah. you don't need to change anything. Like, this is the first time Hollywood got it right. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> so when are you gonna kidnap your first? <laughs> I remember my first time. <laughs> no, I do it in winter. It's just like the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Oh, we live in California. We're in California. Hey, I'll just go up north. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Anyways, um, so what's the takeaway from this? <laughs> well, it's definitely like more not realistic yeah, yeah, yeah. approach. There was definitely some of the stuff was very like. Well, I think it was mainly like comedy. It was very entertaining though. Yeah. <laughs> In real life, nah, you're not gonna see it that much. Interesting concept. It is. It is a whole concept. Too bad. It can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> Don't try this. At home. <laughs> um. Let me see. I mean, you want me to get, give you a serious what? answer, or? <laughs> well, I feel like there's a couple big facts. Like, uh, Millie, when she gets married, right off the bat, with Adam. And then she kind of teaches the brother, uh, the brothers about courting. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, you should, you know, give it time. But I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You married this guy the first day. <laughs> you didn't even know he had brothers. <laughs> you didn't know much about him, but yet you went into it. Well, it's funny, because Adam was like, normally, I, you know, I'd probably just see you after church. You know, for six months, and then, you know, and then ask you out, and then two months, two years later, then I ask you to marry me, mm-hmm. or something like that. And he was like, but, seeing that's going to be winter, you're going to really let me not see you for six months? <laughs> She's like, so just marry me now, you know? It's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but it is funny, yeah, because, like, she did not go through any of the courting things, you know, we talked about it last week. Oh, we know he'd be like a criminal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, he didn't, she didn't know him at all. But, um, yeah, I mean, (laughs) the wife was crazy. I mean, like, it doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Like, they literally had, like, one small, small, like, two-minute conversation, and then she was already, you know, bought and paid for. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, I, I think one thing we could talk about, though, is, like, how Millie, she's like trying to help the boys mature. Mm-hmm. And so that sort of begs the question like, what is maturity in a man? I guess, in, or how mature does a guy need to be when he's ready for marriage? You know? Mm-hmm. And I mean, I guess it's sort of, you know, that question that people ask like, what? Like, when do you know when a man uh, truly, I mean, when a boy becomes a man, you know? Because, you know, obviously it's the age, mm-hmm. right? You know? 
18 now if you turn into an adult or whatever. But um, a lot. Of, I think it has to do more with just the, you know, like uh, how much he's willing to, to sacrifice. You know, because that's when you really know he's mature. Is if he's willing to sacrifice, you know, everything for the good. Mm-hmm. Then that's when you know. Because at that point, you'll do anything to do the right thing, you know? And that's when you know you're actually mature. That's what I think. I don't know if you guys think. I'd say, like, he's, you know, practicing his virtues, and Mm -hmm. he's really, like, on top of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and really focused on, you know, like, you know, learning how to sacrifice. You learn that through. And knowing what to sacrifice Mm -hmm. for. Because you can sacrifice for the completely wrong Mm -hmm. thing, and... You know, that could, you can say, oh, he sacrificed, so he must be a good man, mm-hmm. but it could be the, for the wrong means. Yeah, so yeah. he's got to know what he's going for, mm-hmm. and he's got to know why he's doing it, too. Because you, you can easily just do something and not know why mm-hmm. you're doing it. You're just like, oh, I'm just doing it. Mm-hmm. But if you understand why you're doing it, that's even better understanding of, you know, <laughs> what you're doing. So definitely, like, you know, learning the virtues and being very virtuous, mm-hmm. and then, you know, prudent as well. You know, that's another virtue. There's all these virtues. <laughs> Um, and humble, and humble, and kind, and nice. Mm-hmm. So my big deal, I would say, is if he, the, the man's very virtuous, mm. I would say. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, because the only way to be virtuous is, like, self-sacrificing. Mm-hmm. But, um... Yeah, because I, I know, like... I mean, there are a lot of people who sort of... There's some people who are just like, oh, yeah, I'm mature. So then yeah. <laughs> they go and they do, they do something dumb, you know? Or, like, but, because at that point, they were actually just, like, focusing, they're, like, being led by their emotions, mm-hmm. and they're not really thinking clear, and they just make dumb decisions, you know? But then there's the other side, where it's, like, people who, they're, like, you know, I don't know if I'm actually mature, if I'm actually ready, you know? Mm-hmm. And for me, it's, like, because a lot of times, those people know what they want, and they know what they have to do to get it, mm-hmm. you know? But then they're just, like, stuck in this limbo where they're like what if I'm not good enough you know and um, a lot of times I think what it's like just like you're at that point you're just holding yourself back yeah you're and not just... <laughs> you know you're not at that point you're, it's probably even worse than the person who's like being led by their emotions because you know what's right mm-hmm. you know what you have to do to get there and yet you're just like putting a pause on your whole yeah, then... vocation mm-hmm. you know um, they're not being a true leader <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not being a true man. <laughs> and everyone knows that you need to have a, uh, wait, what was it? A Bugatti to be a man. <laughs> man just, Bugatti. A Bugatti. A Bugatti. Bugatti. You need a Bugatti to be a man. <laughs> no, but because some people, they think like, oh, you're ready because you need finance. Well, we already talked about this on Prime Prejudice, like financially ready. You know, obviously you have to be financially ready, but not... So you can have a mansion and five Bugattis and blah, blah, blah. You know, just, mm-hmm. you just need the basic necessities. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm You're tra- saying this guy didn't he's sleep all night. Me. So he's like... <laughs> he's Look, like, I'm just making like Andrew Tate kind of posture. Oh, it goes like that, huh? I was going like this. We're stuck in the Matrix. Don't you know? <laughs> but I once... <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's called? And what if you were Andrew, like, instead of the character Adam, what if it was Andrew Tate coming to the beach? Oh, no. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, take one. <laughs> Action. <laughs> he go. shows up in his, <laughs> he oh, shows oh. up in his Bugatti, he just, like, crashes into the store. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to find a good wife. <laughs> Bless her, beautiful height. I mean, I have 20 girlfriends, but, you know, actually, I'm not even looking for a wife. I'm looking for another girlfriend. <laughs> one who could cook, clean. Uh, wipe my butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut that part out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let's get back to it. <laughs> you know, like the cat in the hat where it has the, the cat. It's like technical difficulty. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> you saw that one? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> so, yeah. At that point, if you're at that point where you know what you have to do, and you're already... You know, some people are actually still already going towards that path. Like, they're getting, they have a job, they're stable, but for some reason, they're still not making a move. You know, or even though this is what they want, then at that point, they're just making a decision to stay immature. Mm-hmm. They just need some courage. Yeah, because they're, they're like, oh, no, but I'll never be good enough, so I'll just stay where I am, <laughs> you know? 
But at that point, they're just... They're just being cowards. <laughs> you know, they're just being scaredy cats. And because, I mean, obviously, it's a big job. It's not really easy to have a family and everything. It's a big duty, and, and part of maturing is realizing that. And that's why you choose to be better. You choose to change um, and be and pract- be more virtuous because you know that. Because, mm-hmm. you know, at that point, it's not about you anymore. It's about all these other people, you know? It's about someone else. And I think, because I think that actually motivates you because um, cause some, some people are like, oh, but look at me now, I'm a miserable sinner, I'm, you know? <laughs> But, um, I see it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a, it's a all of you. <laughs> obviously, if you're like a drug addict or something, then you know, first deal with that, you know, not the hard, yeah, I know. <laughs> the mountain right there. yeah, yeah, because you don't want to bring that into a, you know, a marriage, no, no. you know, well, it's or make alcoholism, it worse. or mm-hmm. but, um, no vices, no, that's not fun. <laughs> but after that, you know, you're never going to be perfect, you know, and. You have to realize that, but you could always be better. So that's why, if you're always trying to be better, and you're always striving for that, then that's when you know that, you know, that you're going for the good. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, I mean, just what what our dad always says. I don't know where he got it from, but you know, God doesn't call those who are prepared, right, or who are ready. God readies those whom He calls. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, yeah. Well. <laughs> Some food for thought. <laughs> no, yeah, because I think especially, like, it's, it's very motivating. Like I said, because it's not about you anymore. Because some people are like, ah, oh, just me. Who cares about me? But now you have a family right here. You have to put them first. You know? Or put this up before you. And that, and I think that, that really helps. But Another one is, uh, there's a little acronym for joy. Hmm. It's uh, Jesus, others, and you. Mm. So you first give to Jesus, then you give to others, and then you are last. Mm. And then, you know, at the end of that, Dang. if you do that, you get joy. You get more joyful out of that. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because that's why it says three to get married. You know you know that book, oh, yeah, three, three to get, to get married. married, because it's not just you and her. It's, it's mm-hmm. God, God who's right there, you know, witnessing mm-hmm. and, um, you know, and blessing you this bond that you have with each other. Mm-hmm. Huh? God, you, the wife. Yeah. God, you, and the wife. Um, and the best man. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't remember that part. <laughs> it's in there. Just it's like you get a, the microscope. Oh, there it is. The small print. <laughs> small print. If you look in the official Aramaic, <laughs> or what was it, Arabic? I don't know. Hebrew. Yes. <laughs> I should know this. <laughs> should study up. Um, so is there something? You ever see something? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, all I was going to say is that um, with regards to the movie, you know, just to, to get the movie in here a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> movie time. Kidnap those women. <laughs> yep. Make them fall in love with you. They will love you. So. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go. Okay. <clears throat> Adam. This huge monster of a man. Wait, I got the sweater on. <laughs> Almost as strong as I am. <laughs> Not quite as tall. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's, because he's taller, right? <laughs> okay, so, like we said in the beginning, he comes in, into the village to get supplies, right? Like a bear coming out of hibernation. And he's like, I need a wife. Well, you know, other supplies. He goes to the store or whatever. He's like, by the way, you weren't to have but to have any eligible wives for me, do you? Like what? Are you kidding me? Get out of here! No, we'll never let you bear our, our women. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will take. I will have to look at all the women before I choose one. Bless your beautiful heart, wherever you may be. <laughs> uh, buy one get one free combo. <laughs> 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 hmm. This one's too slim. This one's too this. This one's too that. Okay. So, obviously, there's an aspect of that, right? Where you're attracted. You have to be attracted to the girl that you're going to pick, right? So, uh, you know, he does, it's very, like, um, comical the way wait, that he wait, goes wait. about it. 
I mean, like, if you don't, if you're not attracted to the girl that you, that, you know, you're going to ask on a date, then don't ask her on a date, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so not only does she have to have all these virtues or whatever, but you also have to be attracted to her. Okay. But here's the thing, though, is that in the end, he's just looking for someone, not a helpmate in his, in his mission, right, in his vocation, right? He's just looking for someone to, like, take care of all of his brothers, you know, to be the chef or to be the... So, basically, he's looking for a servant, you know what I mean? So, you're not looking for a servant, actually, in marriage, you know? You're supposed to look for a helpmate, you know? So well, that... yeah, it's like Father Rupert says, because everything is your responsibility as a husband. Mm -hmm. The laundry, the dishes, yeah. the diapers, the everything, you know, the groceries. Mm -hmm. But that's why God gave us a wife, because obviously we can't do everything, yeah. you know? But... You know, he gave us a helper, you know, to get <laughs> so, do the job better than us, you know. And they're pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's that's just the beauty of it is that women can do things that men can't. Right. And especially when 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 it comes to children, um, there's a bond that happens between mother and child. That's so profound. I've what I've heard. I don't I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know if it was in the in the young men's catholic guide or whatever or a different book where it says that that um that a lot of times on the battlefield i don't know if this is true or not but oftentimes that men call for their mother you know when they're like deep like deeply wounded or whatever so uh so there's i mean there's 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 that deep bond that's that's um that that, that women can have with their children and that that's why they tend to be more emotional so that they can uh sympathize with with the kids more i mean Honestly, like, at least for me, like, like if, like if, uh, <laughs> like if, you know, Francesca falls, obviously, you know, oh, I try to come for her, but I'm not like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I see this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like for me, sometimes when I see it's really bad, and I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah like, but, oh, but this is I just serious. see it's like a little thing, I'm like, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it off. No, but, Kick but, <laughs> no, but what, what I'm trying to say is that my wife can, can like, uh, like almost feel that same pain mm -hmm. that they just felt, and sympathize with, with with the child, so that they know that they're important. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so at that young age, at, the, at that critical age, their relationship with their mother is deeply important. And uh, Father Ripper gives other reasons for it, but those are just that's just one off the top of my head. Um, and, and also just that you know multitasking, right? They're gonna, if we have um, you know, several kids or whatever, and there's the cleaning, the cooking, and there's other things that have to be done. Obviously, the kids are supposed to be doing their chores once they get to a certain age. But anyways, so so we're not looking for a servant; we're looking for a helpmate. You know, um, so we're we're uh, we're marrying for the purpose of vocation, not for you know. <laughs> it's so funny, man. <laughs> How he just like he's just like looking at every single woman. It's like. Ah, this one has really beautiful eyes, but her eyes are too big. <laughs> and he's her, just, what? her eyes are too big. Her size? Well, size. So that's well, what you said. Eyes. No, yeah. her eyes are. Wait. Her eyes are beautiful, her, her eyes but are they're beautiful. too big. But her size is too big. But her size. He's You're just saying like, his her size. Oh really? Yeah. yeah like her, like, oh. She's too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, um, and so oh, so. No, here. Pretty and trim, but kind of slim. Heavenly eyes, but oh, that size. Yeah, it's, he's talking about the eyes. No, no, that size. She was a, like, she was a chunky girl. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, oh, that size. Well, I didn't even know this. Wait, oh. that's a size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh... So, so, all of his brothers, they were old enough to have their own household already, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't think they, sh they should have been living there, you know? I mean... Eventually they got married, so that was good. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe that's uh, that's that's the upside of the story that that you know Adam's wife made them more gentlemanly and they were able to have a good marriage. Or mm -hmm. we presume, <laughs> but um, but uh, at least beginning in, in the movie at, at the beginning it was more machismo and like it wasn't even that bad. It was just it was just funny, it was just comical I mean, stuff. I just funny because it seemed like he was just so clueless. Mm -hmm. Like oh yeah. You didn't know you were supposed to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, uh, other than that, I, I, I can't, 
I can't think of much else. I mean, the the, the moment when, when Adam realizes, oh, I'm wrong about the way that I view this, mm-hmm. is when he when he realizes that, you know, because he, ha- he has a daughter. Uh, or he didn't know that he had a daughter because he was up in the, in the, whatever cabin it was, far away. Exiled, and he, like, exiled himself. Yeah, he exiled himself. <laughs> his wife was mad at him. For, <laughs> he kidnapped the daughter. <laughs> But one of his brothers came and notified him, like, hey, your, your baby's born. And it's a girl, I guess. And then he was like, man, like, if that happened to my daughter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then he's thinking about, you know, uh, what comes natural to a man is to defend and protect not only her physical self, but also her honor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's not like this movie was trying to, you know, make a big deal about that. But, you know, that's at least a little something that you can think about, you know, that... Like, he was actually thinking, no, 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 I have to protect your honor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I would kill the man that tried to, <laughs> you know, try to kidnap my daughter. So so there's that change of heart, at the very least. And so I, I assume that that trickles also into his marriage, you know? So then he's also looking after his wife. He changes his whole mindset of her just being a slave and him actually, uh, you know, uh, sacrificing for her and loving her properly. Although that's not explicitly said, explicitly said, but you know, it's something you can kind of imagine. You know, kind of makes sense a little bit. So uh, I would say that that's the main takeaway for me of the movie. Um, so it's just that that mindset change of not having a servant, but actually, uh, you know, you're gonna devote a hundred percent of your life to protecting the honor of the family. And so, so that, uh, when when people are like, oh, I'm not ready. Well, maybe they're maybe they're not ready, right? to accept that responsibility maybe they don't even know about the responsibility okay so watch this video now you know <laughs> or watch, watch more father ripperger watch more father ripperger don't watch jackie francois no no jason ever <laughs> no. no candace owens even though she's not catholic anyway but i don't think she's catholic no and i think we should have to talk about like girls like who would just go on dates with anyone you know because <laughs> Okay, I'm not trying to call out anyone. <laughs> I'm not try, trying to call out any Catholic speakers here or anything, but like, I'm gonna call out <laughs> like Jackie Francois. It's like, come on, if the guy has enough courage to ask you out, then go out with him. You know, give every guy a chance or whatever. No. But it's like, if you don't even have a little attraction to this guy, you know, why the heck are you gonna say yes? It's not gonna end out good. You're gonna end up hurting him, and you know, just gonna be a big. A, a bad problem, you know, for both of you. Especially if you're not sure if you what you want. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, you you know, for the girl, you gotta you know, be a, you know at least slightly attracted to him and see that he's a virtuous man. See that he's able to sacrifice himself for for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that real quick because <laughs> there's some girls that are just like, yeah, give every guy a chance. So you're saying that. <laughs> That uh, so you're saying I'm that sorry, you just block yourself. I'm you're, like, Why you yeah. <laughs> you're saying that the Adam's wife was that girl. <laughs> huh? The Adam's wife was that girl then. So oh yeah, she was actually. And then she got married. Yeah. The same day. She made a whole lot of complications with a lot of the guys. <laughs> I mean, she was justifiably angry, but she it obviously. Was her fault too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, she should have like she should have asked the guys a few the the, the, the guy a few questions, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got any brothers or sisters? Oh, you know, we have seven brothers. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> they all live in the same house. <laughs> yeah, we all live in the same house. Where are your parents? Uh, don't know. Actually, where were the parents? <laughs> I don't know. Did they, they pass away? They explain it. They yeah, I, they, they, I, mean, I assume they just passed away. Yeah, they probably, they passed, probably away. passed away. And the brothers just, you know, like, oh. yeah, because because Adam, <laughs> Adam, you know, he's the head of the household, he, you know. Uh, is there anything else? Any other takeaways? I mean, um, not that I can think of. It's just a funny movie, yeah. you know. Uh, it, okay, well, 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 I guess we'll do this at the end. Never mind. I was about to ask it. What would you rate it? But was there anything else? Because since this, this is like all these. Episodes are based on like relationship stuff. Is there any relationship advice maybe getting, we weren't able to get to? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to repeat myself, uh, and I think I did a little bit right now, but at least it tied into the story. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, having to do with maturity, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
if you ever go to spiritual direction with with the priest and you ask them, you know, about advice for dating or whatever, or do you think I should date or whatever, they're like, do you even want to get married? You're like, oh uh, yeah, I, I I guess so or whatever, and they're like, okay, well, why do you want to get married? Oh 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 oh. Well, you have to know the purpose of marriage. Yeah, it's to <laughs> it's to bring husband and wife to heaven. So. Uh, one thing that we have missed, I think, and we haven't mentioned at all throughout these podcasts, is together to grow in the love of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's that. But what 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 I what I wanted to highlight was that in marriage you're gonna have kids, right? But in the end, there is a relationship relationship between man and wife, uh, which supersedes that of taking care of your children. So, you know, it's Jesus first, then it's my spouse, then it's my children. Then it's others, and then it's me. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, a lot of a lot of people think that it's actually more important to take care of the kids. But it's like no, you don't. You don't understand. You don't. What you don't understand is that uh, the welfare of your children depends on your relationship with your wife. You know what I mean. If you have a good relationship with your wife, your par your your kids will be way better off. If you're, if you try to take care of your kids so much that you neglect your relationship with your wife. You're just shooting yourself in the foot, you know. In the end, your uh, your kids need to have a good example of a good marriage and what true love means in a marriage, mm -hmm. true self-sacrifice. It isn't any 50-50. It's 100% and 100%. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like to say, okay, well, I did this and you have to do that. No, 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 no. no. We're on the same team. I don't know if you, I don't know if you knew that, but we're on the same team, so we're gonna give it all we got. You know what I mean? Like if you're on a, if you're if you're on a on a soccer no team. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I mean I I mean uh, you know my, my wife and I you know we totally understand this, but a lot of people don't, and they're like 50, 50, 50, 50. I'm like tired of hearing that fifty fifty. Like if if we're on the same soccer team, or if, you know some people think that that soccer is like not that manly. I mean I I love soccer, but. Uh, let's just say football or whatever. You know, the point is that that you're gonna give it your all. You know, like before you start the game, you're like, oh, we're gonna destroy them. We are going to conquer. It's like, hey, you didn't pass the ball to me, so I'm not gonna, you know, run up as you could pass to me again, or uh, you know what I mean? I don't know, like. I'm not going to run. You didn't pass it to me before. Oh, my gosh. What are you? You're on the same team. You know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to be giving it your all. That's that's one thing I wanted to highlight. You know, Relas your relationship with your wife first, right? Then it's the kids. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it's not 50-50. <clears throat> it's everything you got. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have everything all together, a lot of men, a lot of young men especially, well, all men, a lot, a lot of men, they're they're afraid. They're afraid. They're like, oh, what if I'm not ready? Oh, you give it all you got. And you grow. Every single day you work at it. Oh, I'm not ready. Blah, blah, I don't blah. think it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like what, kind of a, what kind of confidence is that? Oh, no, I have confidence. <gasps> then work on yourself. <laughs> Ask the girl out. <laughs> Marry her. Marry her. Have have thousands of children with her. Have thousands of children. Wow, that's reaction. <laughs> your your name. Just do it. Your name will be spread you out. Just do it. Your name will spread out through the generations. You will conquer the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like have confidence. You know. Like, and uh, like the, nobody has acting, it all together. This way, saying oh, it's not gonna work, or you know. You, <laughs> By doing that, you're just showing that you're not mature. Exactly. You have yeah. to have the right disposition. You have yeah. to have a winning mentality. Hmm. You're not gonna, you're not gonna go into this being like a loser. It's like, no, you're gonna knock it out of the park. You're gonna give it all you have. You know, you're not gonna. Oh, and the, here's another thing: is you're not gonna just say that you're gonna give it all you have. You're literally gonna like not start tomorrow. You're gonna start right now. You know, if you haven't prayed your rosary today, okay, pray your rosary today. If you haven't done this or that today. Now. Exactly. Now, now, now that you're, you're oh, listening oh, to this right now. Time to ask a girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's awake. Knock on the door. Yeah, like for whatever reason, if you feel you're not ready, it's up to your own prudence, whatever. Attack that detail. And plus, it's not like once you're ready that... That you're you, perfect. And, like, if you're, that you're perfect. If you're you have ready, everything together. And then you ask a girl out, doesn't mean you're going to get married to her. 
That doesn't mean she's going to be the best. Because, if anything, that's why you should start, you know, going on, on dates. Because, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's going to be the first one. Maybe it's going to be the second one. Maybe it's going to, you know, you never know. It's a war sister. Yeah. Or maybe it's not God's calling for Oh, yeah. <laughs> if it's going into, like... <laughs> When you start to get double digits, I think it's time to hang up that rack and look and, at the other vocation. And so some people might say, oh, I'm going to wait until this time to start looking. It's like, yeah, I'm going to get married at this age. It's like, you really want to get married at that age? So why aren't you looking now? Yeah, little Timmy. He's like nine years old. <laughs> start now. <laughs> aren't you looking for a wife? He's like, bless your beautiful heart wherever you may be. Hey, hey. Why are you fat? <laughs> Not your eyes, but you're fat. Whoa, that size. <laughs> you're so perfect. It's like a 48-year-old woman. <laughs> Just gonna... no, Anyways. No. Okay, no, no, let's cut that out. Oh, you guys no. get it. Oh, we can't afford it. <laughs> oh, we got you. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we got you. We got you. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, 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 dum. Jailbar. Get out of here. Get him out of here! <laughs> Come on, give us a little a little tape speech. No, no, no more of that. Yes, yes, yes. No, even, I, every time I do it, it's not even funny because I'm in front of the camera. It doesn't even come out funny. It doesn't come out funny? Look, look, look just, you have to improvise, okay? And then you can edit it out. We'll be like um, his henchmen. Yes. Come on. L like, like, think of the person. There isn't someone else I could do. <clears throat> who, who else can you do? Oh, Jocko Willink. Jocko Willink. Excerpt from Seven Brides and Seven Brothers. Echo, welcome. Yeah. We're joined by myself, Jocko Willink. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> okay, I can't even do this. I'm sorry. We have Dan Schneider. Huh? We have Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider? What? Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wait. Dan Schneider. He's always on the show. Keep going. I don't watch the show, but... Um, Take two. Action. <laughs> Discipline equals freedom. You know that time when you get the donuts or the sparkles and the sprinkles? Don't eat it. Don't be weak. Discipline is everything. You really think that some pretty girl is going to want some boy, some little boy that's afraid? Uh-uh. Get it. Okay, stop here. <laughs> Well, first of all, I don't think any man wakes up in the morning and wants to realize that his mother raised a weakling. Do you want that for your life? Think about it. Every second of your life is a decision. Every minute, every second, every day, every week, every month, every year, every lunar year. <laughs> Make the decision. Take the discipline. Fix your vices. Move now. There's no time left. Do you want to wake up five years from now? Ten years from now? Not moving closer to your goals? Huh. That's all up to Take you. ownership. Take it in your hands. Squeeze them tight. <laughs> 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 okay. Squeeze the girl out. There you go. <laughs> Anything else doesn't matter. You will never be perfect, but you you will always be reaching for better. Well, uh, or you do Jordan Peterson now? <laughs> okay, fine. You, you like question me? Ask, <laughs> ask a different one. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Notebook fan. Two, one. Um. Huh. <laughs> uh, so, Jordan Solerson. Oh, sorry. No, this is this is the uh, note, notebook fan tw twenty one. Uh, he says, um, Jordan Solerson. <laughs> uh, I would I, I would like to know your opinion on relationships, specifically on my relationship that I had three years ago. I knew this girl. I'm literally making this all up on the spot. <laughs> I knew this girl and I thought she was really hot. But when I found out that she was Protestant, I was alarmed. 
So then, after a few months of dating her, I decided to dump her. Did I do the right thing? There was another girl that also liked me, but I could have dated her, but I just went for the Protestant. When I went for the Protestant, she just completely disregarded me after that. I'm, in re I'm really in a pickle. Jordan Sorrison. Can you help me? <coughs> like, hmm. You see, <laughs> what does it mean to be in a relationship? First of all, you must understand. Relationship. Is it a ship? Or is it a relation? You must divide the two first. Because it cannot be both. <laughs> Pretend it's Mickey. I could do Mickey. Well, the reason I want to do a lot of these is because that way we can like edit it and no. cut, cut the best parts of it, you know? <laughs> Good thing you asked Mickey. Uh, well, uh, you know, Donald uh, had the same predicament earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good, it's good. <clears throat> and, you know, being king of the Magic Kingdom, it's, uh, it's sort of getting hard, you know, with all these woke agendas, and I see what you mean. Um... <laughs> See, the Protestant revolt, you know, really changed up the kingdom. You know, whatever, let's just, I don't care about any of this anymore, let's just go through. I can't do it. I can't do this anymore. Oh, yo, hey, Mickey. Hey. <laughs> Mickey. Oh, yo. Did you hear about the patriarchy? I am the patriarchy. Or is all I know. Oh, Minnie! Mickey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're talking about... <laughs> Why am I not able to do any of my voices? What happened? You're just out, man. Hey, I think it's hard for you because you have the headphones on. You're kind of like... Yeah, that's true. You can't do and you're also, it. you're also under pressure because of the cameras. Under pressure. You have to clean your room. There we go. Don't you understand? <laughs> what do you mean by right? What is the right? The right to vote? Because <laughs> women don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bucko. Bucko. <laughs> now listen here, bucko. You are <laughs> a toy. <laughs> you are a simp. First, you must re release the inner simp. Go on a bunch of dates. And yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Okay, if, we, what? if we turn to Genesis, we find the first sip, Adam, <laughs> who betrays the Lord only to eat the fruit because his wife told him to. That is a true simp. The biggest simp. This was the first simp. It was then, then that simpiness was... Incarnated. Yes. <laughs> simp incarnated. <laughs> Thus came Cain. <laughs> and then, later down the line, came his great, 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 great grandson, Adam, <laughs> who is part of seven brides for seven brothers. He was a simp. Okay, no, maybe not really. Actually, actually not at all. No, 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 I think about it. <laughs> Just, you aspire from a simp. Learn from Adam. He became a bigger child. <laughs> Learn from, not what to do from the first Adam, and then you could do know what to do from the other Adam. In this movie, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. And it's when you realize that, that you come to the conclusion that what is Protestantism? <laughs> <laughs> it is the protest of living a faithful marriage. <laughs> I have to say, Millie had some bad, but then she had some good, and then she had some bad, and then she had some good. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> she was sometimes hypocritical, but very virtuous in moments. Lessons we learn from Seven Brides for Seven <laughs> Brothers. Oh my god, this is more on this. Let me see. You're going online? No, he was online. <clears throat> He's looking at the lessons we learned. What did we learn? What did we learn, David? Tell us. Luckily, just as the kidnapped Sabin women do in the film my girls seem to understand that these were men that these were men of the wilderness with awful social skills <laughs> albeit spectacular dance moves the brothers were misguided idiots and they were very very lucky that they or that things ended how they did my girls laughed their heads off as the kidnapped girls threw snowballs at their captures and developed very severe cases of stockholm syndrome <laughs> 
The fight scenes also reduced them to fits of laughter. I wondered how deeply I had traumatized them as the movie ended. Just so you know, if you ever... Oh, this is him talking. Just so you know, if you, if you ever want to go off with the mountain men, just let us know, I told them. I really liked that movie, you know, his daughter said at the end. Uh, I held my breath. All the guns and ropes and death threats related to the purity of frontier women hadn't scared her off. And then her daughter, his daughter said, it had a lot of horses in it. <laughs> That's <laughs> Wait, no it didn't. Well, I guess it had some horses. Come on. <laughs> I, know, more, so like, three I or four. It's all like do- more donkeys than horses. I mean, it's more of a, you know, comedy. Little, you know, it's just a pure entertainment. You it's know? pure entertainment. I just thought it was so funny, just how he came down from the mountains, like, hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to pick me a woman, and he gets a woman, and then he's like, oh, I don't know, it was just so funny. <sighs> no, it, it's all like you just got to let it go. It had to do with you, with like, just like making a decision. I guess you could just say that there's doers, and there's a want to be doers. Yeah, want to be doers? <laughs> <laughs> want to be doing. But we already sort of talked about that because some people are like, oh, I need to be so holy, you know, or else I can't do this. But mm-hmm. there are other guys who are, you know, maybe they're not the holiest, but they have some, they have virtue, mm-hmm. but they do it, you know? Yeah, they do it. They're like, I know what I, what I need to do, I know what I want to do, and I know that's the right thing, so I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. But there are people who think that they have to be so holy and so good and so, you know, everything before they start doing it, you know? Well, but it's like, like as you court, you can learn more yeah, yeah. from the other person. Mm-hmm. And they might learn more from you as well. So mm-hmm. you both can benefit through that process, which will even set you up even better. <laughs> so go out there. Don't be shy. <laughs> well, I mean, one thing that we were talking about the other day is um, basically I've encountered a lot of people like since I got married, you know, either at work, you know, when I worked at UPS or whatever, and uh, and just people that, that I've gotten to know or whatever, and they're like, whoa, like you have a lot of guts or whatever. And and you know they, they look at you like if you did something heroic. Well, I, I, it's just basically your vocation, what you're, what you're supposed to do, you know. And like like um, let's just say that that you're gonna jump off a cliff, you know, not not to die, but like you know like to to go in the water, you know what I mean? And it's I guess it takes a little bit of bravery to jump, but at the same time it's just jumping, you know. You, you're not um, obviously, you know, over time you can learn how to dive well into the water or whatever, but assuming there's no rocks at the bottom. <laughs> this is a bad analogy. <laughs> the point is just all you have to do is jump, you know what I mean? It doesn't take that that much, you know, you just move. You just, uh, you have to have the right disposition to just um, uh, I- increase in all the good things, um, you know, to be a better man. You know what I mean? You just have to have that disposition and it should work out. Uh, in the end, if you're really trying, well, yeah, because if it was so hard to get married and have a good family, then God, <laughs> you know, if, you know, if it was so hard to attain that, mm-hmm. then God wouldn't have most people getting married, mm-hmm. you know, or wouldn't have given us these like attractions towards the opposite sex, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, at yes. one point, you gotta also look at the natural things that God put, you know, in us, you know, that could also um, help us find out like what our vocation is and things like that. Um, well, I guess I think that's all we have to say. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so what do you, what would you guys rate this? Out of one out of ten. One out of ten? Mm. I'll go with like... 6.5. Oh. Hmm. Middle down Interesting. <laughs> but in, in terms of the whole movie as entertaining oh. and, you know... It was purely more entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> so on the entertaining side. Yeah. 6.5. 6.5. Oh, honestly, I want to give it an 8 just because I thought I thought it was so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to give it an 8. I'll give it like a 7 or 7.5. Mm-hmm. You know, because obviously, you know, uh, in the grand scale of things, there are a lot of better movies than that. I mean, come on. It's just tons and tons of better movies than that. So, like, I can even give it a 6. But I just love, so love the parts where he's being like, uh, you know, how he has machismo or whatever. It's just so funny to me. It, like, it just looks so... I guess ridiculous ideas are just funny up front, you know? Uh, you know, in, in, in you know, just... 
uh, how do you say? Like, uh, yeah, up front. Like, they're, they're just, the way um, that, th those ideas, you know what I mean, represented right in front of you, you can just laugh at them because they're ridiculous. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what on earth? I, I mean, yeah, for me, <laughs> you guys are going to be surprised at this, but I actually, I did like it a lot. So I'm going to give it an 8.5. But this is the reason why. I got a 7.5. Because it was so funny to me because, <laughs> you know, how feminists, they get so angry when they see men, like, you know, just us that we want to do it, like, you know, do it the right way, the way God intended, you know, the, you know, just marriage, how it's supposed to be. Virtuously. And, you yeah. know, virtuous yeah. and rightly ordered. Good leader. And, <laughs> and he's just looking, it's funny looking at that movie because... He's actually acting the way that they think that we would act, you know? Um, or, I mean, he was acting like, you know, like, you know, trying to do bad things to her or anything like that. But, like, still, it was like he wasn't, you know, he didn't have good manners. He just thought of her as just a servant and things like that. But it's just so funny because he's, like, clueless. He's like, oh, I just thought this is how it's supposed to be. You know? <laughs> like, he wasn't really, like, conscious of how horrible it is. It was. Oh, yeah, there. literally, literally, uh, he's like, well, I have to get a wife now. I can't wait for five, five to six months. You know, I'm going to be closed. You know, I'm going to be, uh, you know, locked up over there in the woods. The pass is going to be closed. I need to get a wife now. <laughs> I only came today to get supplies, and I need to get a wife now. <laughs> I'm not coming again for six months. So I give it an 8.5 just to spit in the face of feminists. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, that's what I give it. I'll scoop you blow right now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, you know, hope you guys like this series. Uh, we're going to get back to the regular podcasts after this. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I mean... Maybe we could do a review every... Definitely episode. comment and see, like, you know. Probably skits here and there. Maybe yeah. like movie reviews here and no there. No promises, but... No, no, no. Hope. Yeah, ho hopefully, hopefully the viewership increases. Um... Obviously, these are good ideas that we're trying to to spread, but obviously, you know, we do want to keep it entertaining, so we'll we'll get better as, as time goes on, but, you know, definitely comment and see things that you would want to see. I know you guys really love his skits. Um, they, they were pretty they good. <laughs> my, I think what, I think, uh, my two favorites are the BLM one and the, the Nintendo one. Uh, the Switch. Oh, they but there were two Nintendo Switch ones. Ah, oh, you know what? I don't know. I think the Switch one was one of the test case, taste testers. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. I'll show you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, guys. What, what a good friend I am. <laughs> I've seen most of them. I've seen the good ones. And just know this. We do this for our entertainment because it's just so funny. Yeah, it is. It really it, is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you like it, but I'm just doing this for fun. Man. Yeah, if, <laughs> if, more, if you know, past time, you know. Have, it's really cool to create things and like see oh that came out really good i mean it's not like i'm doing most of the you know mo i mean the, the the most work that i'm doing is is you know taking notes here and there trying to prepare what i'm going to say for a podcast you know but you know Saul here is basically the producer and he's the cameraman and he's he's uh the host you know what i mean so he's, he does all the heavy lifting over here physically and figuratively <laughs> and i assume spiritually hopefully <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. I'm just I don't know your heart. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you for this good man. Thank you. And by the way... Oh, well, no, actually, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we should leave. Oh, no. Anyways, so like, share, and subscribe. No, 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 no. Do it again. More confidently. Come on. <clears throat> look at the camera. Yeah. Okay, look. You see that button down there? I want you to press it right now. I'll kill you. I'm kidding, I'm just kidding. No, actually, they're going to take off the video if I say that. So, okay. we'll get some you see that button down there? Press it, okay? Or else I'll come to your house, take your... <laughs> just kidding, take your daughters. <laughs> okay, again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see that button down there? It says subscribe. You know, if you weren't dumb enough and you couldn't read it. It says subscribe. So press it. You know that... Also that, you know, thumbs up button? Press that one too. Um, you know, we're going to try to upload whenever we can. And, you know, share this even. You know, do it now. Pause this video, share it, and I don't care who the heck you are. God bless. <laughs> <laughs>